What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here with the week's hottest topics. This is going to be the hot topics for the week of May 23rd through May 28th. Ah, that happens to be my ex's birthday. So you guys, interesting week. So it's been an interesting week. Very interesting week. Um, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, do me a huge solid favor and just hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell button so you guys are notified when I drop anything else or if I decide to go live, which I probably would never go live. But with that being said, you guys, let us go ahead and just discuss what's happened this week. Trending hot topics. Let's get into it. All right, you guys, so the first thing that I want to talk about is going to be my stupid state, the state that I live in, Texas. I don't know what's going on here in Texas. So you guys remember in last week's video, I discussed with you guys about the fact that Governor Hot Wheels, Papa Wheelie, whatever you want to call him, Greg Abbott. So he passed a law that would, um, an abortion law where a mother could not get an abortion if a heartbeat was detected, you know, after six weeks, which typically that's when women find out that they're pregnant, most women, you know, so yeah. And it's also making it easier for people, not even, it don't even have to be the parent of, it don't have to be a father, it can be anybody. Like if your mom, like if, a, if your mom, if you're a teenager and you go get a, an abortion and your mom finds out, she can go and sue them or if, you know, you live in a prestigious neighborhood and, you, and your friends in the neighborhood are like, hey, you had an abortion, they can go and sue that doctor, which I think that is ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous that government is getting involved with abortions and women's reproductive, you know, just in general, I think it's disgusting and it's mostly men. I just don't agree with that at all. Um, so that was one thing. I think it might have been late. I think it might have been over the week. No, it was either. It's been between last Friday and this week sometime. So another thing they passed, they passed another bill here in Texas, which which this one is even dumber than the. It's not as, as terrible. So they passed a gun law here. So you know you have to be a you know you have to register to you know get a gun license. You have to get your gun license. You know you have to take your safety training. You have to take your tra training courses and all that stuff. That's typical, right? Well, they decided to let go of that. You don't have to do any of that. If you want to buy a gun, you can just go and buy a gun. You don't have to take the you know the, the courses. And it's so funny because I was on Twitter one day. And somebody that I, you know, follow, they quote retweet us. They would um, tweet at somebody, and they were talking about Texas, and they were like, "What's going on now?" And I left up under the comment, "I'm like, either it's about that abortion thing or this gun law." And then someone came up under me and said, "Oh, I love the new gun law." And I'm like, "Really?" So then I challenged this person, and I was like, "If you love, you love the gun law. What do you feel about someone who may have a gun that doesn't know how to use it?" And then his response to me was, it's not rock, it's just, it's just a gun, it's not rocket science. And I said, I never said it was rocket science. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's, it's rocket science. What I'm saying is, what happens if you're in the presence of someone who doesn't know what their safety, you know, when the safety is on or when the safety is off, and they point the gun at you and boom, they shoot you and you did. He was just like, oh, well, I'm like, oh, well. And I was like, you know what? Stop arguing. Don't argue. Don't go back and forth. It's stupid. That's a dumb argument that, oh, well, basically, oh, well, because I don't get it. <laughs> Makes no sense. So, and I said, okay, so, oh, well, oh, well, right? Okay, let's play with that. Oh, well, oh, well. So someone shoots, someone accidentally shoots and kills you. Like that happens all the time, even with kids. And that's the one thing that's like, I'm like, well, shit. At this point, you might as well just say anybody can buy a gun that wants to buy a gun. Like, that's really what it feels like now. You just say, hey, you want a gun? Here you go. You got a gun. Do you know how to use a gun? No. Shit, that's fine. 
you don't need to know how to use it. So my thing is, if that happens, if you get someone who has no working knowledge of a gun, and they shoot you and kill you, then that person should not be held accountable for what they did because they can play ignorance. Oh, I didn't, and that actually would be probably a defense that a lawyer would use. Well, my client, you know, didn't know how to use the gun and they didn't realize that the safety was on off at the time that they pointed the gun at the person. Oh, well, so sorry to the person like that. That could that would be something. It's just ridiculous. I just don't get it. I truly, truly don't get it. I don't. It makes no sense to me. At this point, it's just time for Texans to band together and roll Governor Hot Wheels out of office. What I think he comes up for re-election next year. Next year, is that next year that he comes up for re-election? I know it's not this year. I believe it is next year that he comes up for re-election. I believe it's next year. Whenever he comes up for re-election, Texans, let's man together and hop him, you know, roll him on out the door. I mean, we had to deal with the extreme cold in February because that was the that was the highlight of it. And there's and they still talk about that on the news, like on my local news here in Dallas. They still are actually talking about what happened in February. And mind you, we're in May, almost in June, but that was terrible. That was terrible, those blackouts. And, you know, they were talking about that they were supposed to be rolling blackouts. This, my apartment, that was not a rolling blackout. Nothing about that was rolling. But, yeah, you guys, that is the first thing that I want to talk about with guns. I'm trying to wait for this phone to charge up just a little bit so I can get the information about the, the shooting that happened yesterday. And we can talk about that. But um, let's move forward. All right, you guys. So the first thing that I want to talk about is going to be my stupid state, the state that I live in, Texas. I don't know what's going on here in Texas. So you guys remember in last week's video, I discussed with you guys about the fact that Governor Hot Wheels, Papa Wheelie, whatever you want to call him, Greg Abbott. So he passed a law that would, um, an abortion law where a mother could not get an abortion if a heartbeat was detected, you know, after six weeks, which typically that's when women find out that they're pregnant. Most women, you know, so yeah. And it's also making it easier for people, not even, it don't even have to be the parent of, it don't have to be a father. It can be anybody. Like if your mom, like if, a, if your mom, if you're a teenager and you go get a, an abortion and your mom finds out, she can go and sue them. Or if you know, you live in a prestigious neighborhood and, you, and your friends in the neighborhood are like, hey, you had an abortion, they can go and sue that doctor, which I think that is ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous that government is getting involved with abortions and women's reproductive, you know, just in general, I think it's disgusting and it's mostly men. I just don't agree with that at all. Um, so that was one thing. I think it might have been late. I think it might have been over the week. No, it was either. It's been between last Friday and this week sometime. So another they passed they passed another bill here in Texas, which which this one is even dumber than the. It's not as as terrible. So they passed a gun law here. So you know you have to be a you know you have to register to you know get a gun license. You have to get your gun license. You know, you have to take your safety training. You have to take your tra training courses and all that stuff. That's typical, right? Well, they decided to let go of that. You don't have to do any of that. If you want to buy a gun, you can just go buy a gun. You don't have to take the, you know, the, the courses. And it's so funny because I was on Twitter one day and somebody that I, you know, followed, they quote retweeted, they would um, tweet at somebody. And they were talking about Texas and they were like, what's going on now? And I left up under the comment. I'm like, either it's about that abortion thing or this gun law. And then someone came up under me and said, oh, I love the new gun law. And I'm like, really? So then I challenged this person. And I was like, if you love, you love the gun law, what do you feel about someone who 
may have a gun that doesn't know how to use it. And then his response to me was, if not rock, it's just, it's just a gun. It's not rocket science. And I said, I never said it was rocket science. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's, it's rocket science. What I'm saying is, what happens if you're in the presence of someone who doesn't know what their safety, you know, when the safety is on or when the safety is off, and they pointing the gun at you and boom, they shoot you and you did. He was just like, oh, well, I'm like, oh, well. And I was like, you know what? Stop arguing, don't argue, don't go back and forth. It's stupid. That's a dumb argument that, oh, well, basically, oh, well, because I don't get it. <laughs> makes no sense so and I said okay so oh well oh well right okay let's play with that oh well oh well so someone shoots someone accidentally shoots and kills you like that happens all the time even with kids and that's the one thing that's like I'm like well shit at this point you might as well just say anybody can buy a gun that wants to buy a gun like that's really what it feels like now you just say hey you want a gun here you go you got a gun do you know how to use a gun no shit that's fine you don't need to know how to use it so my thing is if that happens if you get someone who has no working knowledge of a gun and they shoot you and kill you then that person should not be held accountable for what they did because they can play ignorance oh i didn't and that actually would be probably a defense that a lawyer would use well my client you know didn't know how to use the gun and they didn't realize that the safety was on off at the time that they pointed the gun at the person Oh well, so sorry to the person. Like that that could that would be something. It's just ridiculous. I just don't get it. I truly, truly don't get it. I don't. It makes no sense to me. At this point, it's just time for Texans to band together and roll governor hot wheels out of office what i think he comes up for re-election next year next year is that next year that he comes up for re-election i know it's not this year i believe it is next year that he comes up for re-election i believe it's next year whenever he comes up for re-election texans let's man together and hop him you know roll him on out the door I mean, we had to deal with the extreme cold in February because that was the that was the highlight of it. And there's and they still talk about that on the news, like on my local news here in Dallas. They still are actually talking about what happened in February. And mind you, we're in May, almost in June. But that was terrible. That was terrible. Those blackouts. And, you know, they were talking about that. They were supposed to be rolling blackouts. This my apartment. That was not a rolling blackout nothing about that was rolling but yeah you guys that is the first thing that i want to talk about with guns i'm trying to wait for this phone to charge up just a little bit so i can get the information about the, the shooting that happened yesterday and we can talk about that but um let's move forward all right you guys next let's talk about the shooting that happened in san jose so there were um 10, so it says shooting San Jose. It says 10 dead, including a gunman, after attack at a California rail um, yard. So a shooting erupted in the early hours of Wednesday morning at a light rail maintenance yard in San Jose, California. Has left at least 10 people dead, including the gunman. Local leaders have described the violence as a terrible, terrible tragedy as authorities search for a motive. Um, authorities reported on Wednesday that 40 people were at the facility at the time the shooting occurred and the gunfire erupted in two separate buildings. Police say the shooter was an employee of the Valley Transportation Authority, which operates the light rail facility in Silicon Valley. The shooting began around 6.30 a.m. local time in a facility that stores trains and serves as a transit control center and the vehicles include employees of that facility of the facility the folks were heroes during COVID-19 the buses never stopped running VTA didn't stop running said Cindy Chavez a Santa Clara County Supervisor 
they just kept at work and now we're really calling on them to be heroes a second time to survive such a terrible tragedy okay it is just sad that it keeps happening you know because i think this is they they named how many they counted how many times this year alone we've had a mass killing and it's in the hundreds which is ridiculous and we're just in may like terrible yeah so the violence began early, like i said it, it started early on it just doesn't make any sense So they um in this article right here that I'm reading for Yahoo from Yahoo News it says multiple news reports have identified the attacker as a 57-year-old Sam Cassidy citing law enforcement sources authorities said the shooter took his own life what a coward what a freaking coward you went into that facility and killed other people and you took your own life in the end such a coward so yeah, it says the after shooter rescue team ran into the building as shots were being fired, and I know it. I know that it saved many lives. Smith said, "We had some heroics, her, hero, her, heroics, that I think resulted in a dim, diminished loss of life." That's just ridiculous. You go, like I said, you go into that building and you kill those people, but then you take the coward's way out and kill yourself. So a spokesperson for the Santa Clara Sheriff's Office said bomb sniffing dogs detected explosives at the shooting scene. The authorities are bringing in a bomb robot to scan the scene. <clears throat> they are searching every crevice of the building, he said. The Sheriff's Department confirmed in a press conference that it was investigating whether the shooting was related to one or more fires that broke out in San Jose around the same time. The San Jose Fire Department responded to a large house fire at 6.36 and another fire in a commercial area at 6.26 a.m. Both were reported just moments before the shooting at the rail yard, which is a few minute, a few minute drive away. FBI spokesperson Craig Ferris said the FBI was flying in extra assistance from the agency's resource center at Quantico, Virginia. San Jose, the 10th largest city in the United States, with more than a million people is about 50 miles from San Francisco in the heart of Silicon Valley. Wednesday's attack was a country's second mass shooting in less than okay second mass shooting in less than two years. Is it really the second? Because I mean we had the one earlier this year. We had the one where the man shot up, what did he shoot up? The, uh, the the massage parlors. Then we had the guy that shot up the massage parlors. Then uh, the week after that, it was another shooting. It just, and this is a reason why we, you know, and then I saw the, like, the likes of the nutcase Marjorie Taylor Greene She's talking about this, the Democrats want to take people's guns. Nobody wants to take your guns. What people are trying to say is we need stricter and strong, we need better gun laws. Like, my question is, what does a person need with an assault rifle? I, I don't understand that. What does a person really need with an assault rifle? If you can make me understand what people need with that, maybe I won't understand it, but I just don't understand. Now, a handgun, that stuff, I, I get it, but an assault rifle, what do you need with it? Like, but um, like I said, there were nine, there were ten victims. So I'm guessing the ten victims include the the gunman himself. So we're gonna forget him and move. We're gonna forget him, but we're gonna say rest in peace to the other nine individuals that did pass away, and may the gunman rot in hell. Forgive me or not. I, I I said what I said and I meant it. Rest in peace to the nine victims that he he did kill. And may he rot in hell for eternity. But yeah, you guys, let's move on and just talk about some more positive things, I guess, or fun things. Let's move on. All right, you guys, next, let's talk about Bashir Gray. Now, 
I was trying to remember when did this stuff happen with Bashir Gray, but this shit happened last year in the in COVID when he attacked his wife and she had to sneak away to get help. So he's pled guilty to that. I mean, I don't know how you couldn't I don't know how he couldn't when they had a standoff and did they they had to call SWAT in, didn't they? Yeah. So Bashir Gray, he pled guilty to this and I think it's a bit of a slap in the face to the woman that they only sentenced him to 10 days. I think that's ridiculous. 10 days in jail, in the county jail. Let me just look at everything. But yeah, they gave him 10 days in jail. Okay, this is from People Magazine. Whenever it pulls up. So yeah, Bash Empire's Bashir Gray pled guilty to assaulting his wife and sentenced to 10 days in jail. Bashir Gray was sentenced to 10, jail, 10 days sentenced to jail in March after being arrested on domestic battery charges in July of 2020. 10 freaking days. He was arrested, he, so he was sentenced to spend 10 days in the Arizona County Jail after pleading guilty to assaulting his wife. The Empire actor entered a guilty plea to, char to the charge of aggravated assault in February, about seven months after he was first arrested for strangling his wife, according to court documents obtained by People. The other related charges against him included aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and kidnapping. Were, really? Oh, wow. That is interesting. So I'm going to read it one more time. The other related charges against him, including aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and kidnapping, were dropped per his plea agreement. In addition to his 10-day jail stay, Gray will have to complete three years of probation with various conditions, documents from his March 31st sentencing hearing show. He was ordered to not drink any alcohol for the duration of his probation and to not have any contact with the victim in any form unless approved by the adult probation department in Arizona. That's the least I could do for that woman. He must also pay restitution to the victim and participate in a domestic violence offender treatment program. Reps for Gray did not immediately respond to people's requests for a comment. Yeah, that's fucked up. You gotta keep it real with you. Cause let's see here. It says police responded to a 911 call around 10, 15 p.m. The previous night the, that an adult female victim had allegedly had been allegedly assaulted at her Goodyear home by her husband, who she identified as Bashir Gray, an actor on the TV series Empire, according to a press release by the Goodyear Police Department. The woman was treated and released for non-life threatening injuries, police said at the time. Yeah, 10 days in jail, that's, and I mean, the least y'all can do is say he don't have any contact with her, but damn, that's kind of, that's kind of janky, I guess you would say. Very janky, but I, you know, I wish the best for his wife. I wish the best for her. I hope he gets himself some help. I don't, you know, thinking about it with, when it comes to Empire and the, 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 the guys that played on there, the kids more specifically, Jussie has had his issues. This one has had his issues. It's the oldest one that never had it. You know, he married the girl from Empire, the girl that played Grace, and they actually just celebrated their wedding anniversary recently. He's the only one that's doing some good in, good in his life right now. But yeah, that's it, you guys. Let's move on. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Erica Mena and Safari. I am so over these two. Erica Mena and Safari are giving me Ray J and Prinky. One minute they good, the next minute they want a divorce. One minute they good, divorce. Baby, divorce. Like, we all know Erica and Safari are expecting baby number two. I don't know when she's due, but they are expecting baby number two. Now, you guys also remember, I reported, I talked about this a few weeks. I, I talked about this when it came out that she was pregnant. And you guys remember. Wendy Williams had a few things to say about it, and Erica Mena got in her feelings about that. She was ready to fight Wendy. She was talking about her, you know how her husband didn't abuse her the right way, and that she would beat her ass. And remember, I, 
in, in that time. Wendy didn't say anything bad about Eric and Sofari. She just said that, you know, what they're doing, like, I need to figure this out. Like, one minute you're off, one minute you're on. Like, either you guys are going to divorce each other or you guys are going to work together to be co-parents, one of the two. And I didn't think anything bad about what Wendy said at that time. So now it's come out that Erica has filed for divorce from Safari. And I'm just like, ah, what you got to say to Wendy now? But like I said, when it comes down to Erica and Safari, I do know that Love and Hip Hop Atlanta has been filming. I don't know if Safari and Erica are coming back to Atlanta or if they're going to do finish off New York. I don't know what those two are going to do. But suffice it to say, Love and Hip Hop is back in production. Um... Honestly, when it comes to Eric and Safari, I'm surprised. I, you know, the last time I talked about them, I thought they were married for at least three years. They've only been married at least, what, two years at this point? <sighs> you hate to see it happen. You hate to see a couple break up. You hate to see a family break up, especially with them getting ready to bring a new life into this world. And then they already have one child together. Oh, that pulled my hair. So, yeah, it, it's... It is what it is with those two. Like I said, I don't feel no types of way about it, but y'all might, I don't know how y'all feel about it. I just feel like, you know, they're going to be the Ray J and Prince, Princess of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. They're going to toy with divorce. They're going to toy with getting back together. They're going to toy with divorce. Oh, we're back together. Nope, we're going to divorce. Now we're pregnant. Up, oh, divorce. Up, oh, we're back together. I just feel like that's what's going to be the running thing with Safari and Erica Mena. I was really, honestly, just, I'm surprised that they made it as long as they have, two years, but hey. And more so, I was surprised because of both their, I was surprised because of both of their personalities that we see on the show. He is a, a goofball. I don't know if that's a truck or if that is a, I don't know what that is, but yeah, surprised by both of them. Um yeah let's move on shall we all right you guys let's do a little bit of reality talk um you guys did you guys check out the trailer for the real housewives of potomac so real housewives of potomac season six it'll be back to us on january no no no, no july 11th so that'll be just a few that'll be five days before my birthday that's five days before my birthday because my birthday is July the 16th. It's a Friday. And I still don't have any plans as of yet. But yeah, Real Housewives of Potomac trailer came out. I think it came out. When did that trailer come out? When did my cousin text me about it? I think that was Tuesday. I think my cousin texted me Tuesday and she said, did you see this? And I said, I had already thought I was just about to text you about it. So yeah, Real Housewives of Potomac, we're back season six. We no longer have Monique on the show. We have a newcomer by the name of Mia Thorne. I believe that's her name. So I can tell you guys when it comes to Potomac this season, I didn't know anything going into it. I didn't read, you know, I didn't, I didn't look at the hashtag for Real Housewives of Potomac. I didn't look at anything. <clears throat> I think the most that I can tell you guys that I did do was keep up with Richie Sky. And it was far and, free between, far and few between when it comes to Potomac because I just did not want to know anything. I think that's been the thing for me, especially when it comes to like Potomac and Atlanta. You know, we see it in the blogs and I and then when we get to the show, it's like, I don't feel anything. It's like my reactions are, they're, they're pure, you know, my reactions are what they are. But it's like, when it comes to it, you've already, <clears throat> you, you basically saw it play out, but you didn't really see it play out until the show comes on. But um, the Potomac trailer looked good. Um, I still can't believe Ashley is back. You guys know I can't stand Ashley. God, I can't stand Ashley. Um, Mia and Candace. Why are y'all throwing food at each other like that? Is so childish. Now, Mia, you did start it. And I text my cousin, like, I hope Candace learned how to bob and weave. I really do learn, hope she learned how to bob and weave. Giselle and Karen going at it as usual. Giselle and Wendy are going at it. I'm interested in that one. That one in the Eddie situation, I'm interested in that situation. I'm interested in that. Wendy looks really good. 
she looks good, but she looked good last season. I know people joke, made fun of her. We talked, people talked about her wigs, and then some people did talk about her body. And now it looks like Wendy may have went and got her body done. I don't know. That's a, I'm, 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 I'm guessing she did. I don't know that for a fact. But yeah, the trailer looked good. It'll be back, like I said, Sunday, July 11th. Um, I don't know what time it's going to be. Ah, you know what? They might be taking the place of Marriage to Medicine. Oh, God. That, mean that, they're gonna be, that means that Shaws of Sunset will be their lead-in. I don't get that, though. Why is Sop, why, I, I, I used to love, I still watch Shaws of Sunset from time to time, but it just hasn't been the same to me, honestly, when it comes to Shaws of Sunset. I love Gigi. I know most people don't care, but I love Gigi. I, Mike, Mike just gets on my nerves at times. I don't know too much about Nima or, De actually, I do know about Nima and Destiny. I like Nima, but Destiny annoys the shit out of me. MJ has always annoyed me since the beginning, and so has Reza. I've never been a Reza fan. I don't like Reza. I can't stand Reza. I really cannot stand Reza. Reza is just an annoyance to me. So, yeah, I guess Potomac is going to be the lead-in to, I guess, which they need to switch that, that Potomac is the lead-in to Shots of Sunset. I'd rather watch that first and then move on with my life. But, um, yeah, so that's that. Um, what else? Love After Lock, if you guys. That returns on June 18th. That is a Friday. Friday, June 18th. Um, they showed a little sneak, a little, a little teaser trailer for the show. Hilarious. I, when I watched it, I cracked up laughing. I'm so ready for Love After Lock to return. Um, that is my show. That is my shit. Love me some Love After Lockup. Um, well, Love After Lockup, what season is this? I, you know, I really hate the way that they number their seasons. I don't know if this is still season three or if this is going to be season four. Like, what season is this with Love After Lockup? Like I said, the way that they number their seasons is so stupid. I have a strange feeling it's going to be season three. I, I have a strange feel, feeling that this is going to still be season three of Love After Lockup. Actually, let's see if I can find it. Let's see if we can figure that out right now. Love after. I still feel like it's going to be season three. When it should be season four. Because like what number did we leave off on last season? We left off on number 34. How many episodes was in season two? It was like 50 something in season two, right? There were like 50 something, 40 or 50 episodes. This might be season four. I think this might be season four, you guys, right? Because I think anytime we get a new batch of inmates and I think anytime we get a new batch of cast members, I think they change the season. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, the season when Shane, Lacey, and John came on, that was season two, right? And then... The season where we got Chevelle and Quaylon, um, that was season three. So I'm pretty sure positive this might be season four. I hope and pray it's season four. Like I said, we TV and a number, and just is the dumbest shit I've ever saw in my life. But that is it for some reality talk. Let me know if you guys are. Let me know if you guys watch those shows, those two shows that I named, Real Housewives of the Potomac. I know most of y'all do, and let me know if y'all watch Mer not Mer Love After Lockup. I know most of y'all watch that as well. Let me know if you guys are excited for both of the seasons. But with that being said, let us move on. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Candy and her restaurant, her and Todd's restaurant out there in Atlanta, Blaze. Now, I do, like I said, I do need to go to Atlanta. I think I want to check out, um, what's the restaurant? What's the restaurant? I want to check out, um, Old Lady Gang, OLG. So, um, this article comes to us from All About the Tea. So it says, Candy's, um, Candy Burst's Blaze Steak and Seafood Restaurant has been shut down after failing a restaurant inspection on May 18th. The eatery owned by Candy Burst and her husband, Todd Tucker, opened in November of 2020. And a boast of, and, and a boast of, Okay, that doesn't make sense to me, but whatever. Um, so yeah, 
let's see here. So it says the restaurant scored 55, which is considered failing and closes doors on May 20th to address the in issues cited in the health inspection. Didn't OLG at one point close because they got a C rating when they first opened? So yeah, so it says the inspector deducted points for the following infractions. It says nine points after the inspector observed a food handler switching from raw seafood to ready to eat food without washing hands. That is nasty. That's really nasty. Ugh. That, I mean, that's, ugh. No. Don't know what's on your hands. Hell to the knob. So then it says another nine points um, because the prep coolers were below 41 degrees. Then it says four point penalties included a Chick-fil-A cup in an area with regular food supplies. Now that one is just plain stupid. Like you could have moved that, you could have threw that cup away. Okay. And then it says a lack of procedures and supplies for employees to handle vomiting and diarrheal events. Ew. And then it says pink organic residue in both ice makers. Okay. And then it says a lack of consumer advisory on the menu for potentially raw or undercooked meat. There were three point reductions related to storage problems and staff wearing inappropriate jewelry. So I don't know. Uh, okay. Interesting. So Blaze Steak and Seafood Restaurant was um, supposedly slated to be featured on Candy's upcoming Bravo spinoff show that will be that, that is still in production. The spinoff is set to premiere in late 2021 and will focus on the entrepreneurial couple expanding their restaurant portfolio in Atlanta. Aww. Yeah, it says right here, this is not the first time one of Candy's restaurants has been hit with health code violations. According to the Georgia Department of Health records dated August 24, 2017, the old lady gang number one received a slew of health code violations and earned a dismal C rating. The following special reports revealed the following infractions. No soap or paper towels located at hand. Ugh. How the hell was y'all washing y'all hands? What was y'all? Ugh. No, that's nasty. Um, observe soil buildup inside of ice bam. Observe potentially hazardous food. Cold held at greater than 41 degrees Fahrenheit. She has a running thing. They have a running thing with that 41 degrees. I know, I'm noticing that. Observe an employee with no hair restraint. Nasty as fuck. Observe a hair, hair, uh, observed employee. What well, it says it twice. Wet wiping cloths not stored in sanitized solution between uses. Okay. And observe cutting board grooved or and or pitted and no longer cleanable. Yeah, candy them will get it together. But I do want to try um OLG out when I go to Atlanta. I also, you know, I hear people talking so positively about Lanethia. I might try that out as well. I don't know. We'll see. I'll let you guys know. But um, let's move on. All right, you guys. And then the last two things that I'm going to talk about, one of them is a congratulations. The other one, I'm not so sure what it is. So congratulations are in order to Fantasia and her husband. They welcomed their baby girl into the world this week. Kazia, I think that's how, you, I, I don't know how to pronounce her name. But yeah, Fantasia and her husband welcomed their baby girl into this world. Now, somebody else that might be welcoming the baby into this world, Nick Cannon. Now, granted, I talked about Nick Cannon the last time when, you know, we talked about him having, you know, his um, twins that he's expecting. Um, The same way we talk about future, you know, NBA young boy on them, y'all are going around and just shooting the clubs up, you know, just fertilizing, you know, these women's wombs, which is, which you, you know, which you, you see, you, you know, your you, you little man juice. Now, granted, Nick Cannon is rich. He can take care of these kids. But at a certain point, you got to think about it. Like, it's not really just monetary monetarily taking care of ch children it's physically being there and if you have a kid in this household that household that household that household how are you effectively being a hands-on dad when you have to go from house to house to house to house you know I, unless you're gonna get unless you're gonna get a whole compound and put you and all your baby mamas on the compound together i don't know how that's gonna work really don't because at, at some point, you're going to be spreading yourself thin. 
and you will have an issue where your kids will be like, you know, you know, you gave such and such more attention than you gave me growing up. Like you see it when people when people have, you know, X amount of kids. There are some kids that'll say, Well, I felt like you showed favoritism toward that child or I felt like you loved that child more than me. You did more with that person than you did with me. You didn't come here with me, you didn't do this with me, you didn't do that with me, but you did that with that person. <clears throat> so I definitely I, I I wonder how is he gonna do that. Like at one point I felt that way, you know, with my when I found out about my biological mother, I did feel that way. But it that 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 feeling soon dissipated. Like I, I didn't think about it anymore because I was like, you know, my mom, she's been a present mother, and I didn't think about it after a certain point of time. But it, it how are you gonna? I, I feel like he's gonna be spreading himself thin. Then when you think about, it, I'm like, damn. You are having unprotected sex with these women. On top of you having babies, are we getting tested? I'm not being funny, but are we getting tested? But yeah, that's it. I don't know whether the say can. I mean, it, it hasn't been confirmed if it's the baby is his or not. I think the girl just posted a ba her baby's name and the last name was Cannon, and someone just ran with and you know she, someone asked is this Nick's baby. So she didn't confirm nor deny, neither did he. So I don't know what's what with that situation. But uh, yeah, that's actually all that I want to talk about this week, you guys. Let me know what you guys think about all the stories that we've talked about today. And um, I will see you guys later on for um, what show comes out on Friday. Ready to love. I'll see you guys for that one. And then that'll be it. And I'll see you guys again for Sunday's shows. And we will start the whole cycle over again, you guys. Um, we do this. I try to do this. Well, we do this every week. I try to do this the same time, and the same, I do this. Try to do this the same time. We do this the same place. Um, if you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, do me that favor and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware when I drop in and share this video. Until the next time, you guys stay safe out there. Please take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands. If you wear a mask or not, be safe in whatever you do. And uh, be blessed, you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, you guys, that's it.